the Black Lives Matter organization is running into trouble with the law due to its shady financial practices. Someone has to pay, but we don't even know who's in charge. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. Black Lives Matter over the years has garnered a lot of supporters. It may have started out as a social media hashtag, but it grew into an international movement. Just like Throwback Thursday. As a movement, Black Lives Matter aims to fight police brutality and systemic racism. But BLM isn't just a movement or a social media hashtag. It's an organization. A rather confusing one. I'm talking about the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation, which goes by BLMGN or sometimes BLMGNF. It's the nonprofit charity that owns the website BlackLivesMatter.com, and it's probably what most people associate with the BLM movement. Following the death of George Floyd, BLMGNF raised $90 million. After paying expenses and giving money to local BLM chapters, it still had $60 million left over. As a nonprofit organization, BLM GNF is supposed to file Form 990 with the IRS. That form, which is publicly available, is supposed to disclose a charity's organizational structure, employee compensation, programming, and expenses. But BLM GNF hasn't filed Form 990 since it received millions in donations. The one it filed for 2019 lists no revenue, no expenses, no assets, and no compensation for its directors. That's obviously not the case anymore. And the missing Form 990 is one reason the attorneys general of both Washington State and California have issued warnings to BLM GNF. They say BLM GNF is delinquent, meaning that it failed to provide crucial tax and charity filings. Last month, Washington Attorney General Robert Ferguson warned that all solicitations conducted on its behalf must immediately cease and that it could face up to a $2,000 fine each time it receives a contribution. Likewise, California Attorney General Rob Bonta said BLM GNF is prohibited from soliciting or dispersing charitable funds. BLM GNF has now taken down the donation page that was on BlackLivesMatter.com. As of January 31st, BLM GNF has 60 days to file California tax and charity documents for 2020, the same year it raised $90 million. If it misses the 60-day deadline, BLM GNF could lose its tax-exempt status and be hit with late fees. If that happens, BLM leaders would be held personally liable for these fees. Now you might be thinking, what's the big deal? They're just late in filing their finances. Well, according to the Washington Examiner, BLM's charity registration is also out of compliance in Connecticut, Maine, Maryland, New Jersey, North Carolina, and Virginia. As a charity taking people's donations, BLM GNF is not very transparent. And that's a huge problem. I'll explain after the break. Welcome back. Now this may come as a surprise to you. But BLM hasn't been a charity for social justice for very long. On BlackLivesMatter.com, they traced their founding to 2013, in the wake of the killing of Trayvon Martin. But BLM GNF officially registered as a 501c3 nonprofit charity with the IRS in December 2020, half a year after the George Floyd protests began. Before, it was what's called a fledgling nonprofit meaning that it wasn't recognized by the government as tax-exempt. In order to process donations, BLM GNF used what's called a fiscal sponsor. When people donated money to BLM GNF, they actually donated it to another charity, which eventually gave the money to BLM GNF in exchange for a percentage of the donations. BLM GNF essentially borrowed the charity status from two other California-based charities, Thousand Currents and the Tides Foundation. Thousand Currents reported that it transferred more than $66 million directly to BLM GNF in October 2020. After officially registering with the IRS, BLM GNF was able to operate as a charity 
independent of its fiscal sponsors. And yet, who controls the money is unclear. Charity Watch is an independent, non-profit charity watchdog organization, and it has some concerns about BLMGNF. According to Charity Watch's executive director, BLMGNF is a giant ghost ship, full of treasure, drifting in the night with no captain, no discernible crew, and no clear direction. That can create some problems. BLMGNF's executive director, Patrice Kahn Cullors, stepped down from her role last year. Kahn Cullors supposedly appointed two other activists, Makani Themba and Manifa Bandele, as senior executives for BLMGNF. But both of them announced in September that they never took the job. According to them, it was because they were not able to come to an agreement with the acting leadership council. Both Themba and Bandele don't even know who took over as BLM's top executive after their departure, and neither would say who served on the council. This is a problem, because BLM explicitly states that an executive director shall have charge of all funds and securities of the corporation. BLM co-founders Alicia Garza and Opal Tometi are already out of the picture, so there's no executive director as far as we can tell. BLM still has two board members, but they're pretty tight-lipped about who's in charge of the organization and its money. This is highly unusual for a charity. And it's not good to hide this type of information if they want to gain trust from donors. Charity expert Doug White says this is a major red flag. That they won't give an honest or complete or straightforward answer in regards to its leadership is a concern. Not only do they not have an executive director, but they also don't want to tell you how the organization is being run. In response, Indiana's Attorney General alluded to BLM as a scam, a house of cards that's starting to fall. And the National Legal and Policy Center, a conservative watchdog group, filed a former complaint with the California and Washington Attorneys General demanding a full investigation and audit of the group and possible criminal sanctions. But it's not just state governments and the political right scrutinizing BLM-GNF's shady practices. BLM supporters have their own issues, too. More after the break. Welcome back. According to the New York Times, in recent years, the Black Lives Matter movement has grown more divided. In a very public dispute, several chapters within the national organization, known as the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation, broke away claiming that the group's national leaders had failed to provide financial transparency or include the chapters in decision-making. This has led to a movement called BLM 10+, which consists of the original 10 BLM chapters. Last year, BLM 10+, complained about how the BLM Global Network doesn't give details, such as how many entities there are, how they're related to each other, who's in charge, or what agreements they've made. It doesn't report how much staff members and the BLM founders get paid. It doesn't have a consistent definition of what qualifies as a chapter. It hides details about the decision-making processes. It intentionally discourages communication between chapters. And it perpetuates internal distrust between them. Not great for an organization managing millions of dollars in donations. Now, it seems BLM leaders are quietly jumping ship to avoid accountability. In fact, one of the BLM board members updated his LinkedIn page to distance himself from BLM. Until recently, it said he works for an international social justice organization. Now it just says he's working for a nonprofit. Because remember, BLM leaders might soon find themselves personally liable for a lot of money that's unaccounted for. But the issue here isn't just about BLM-GNF's disorganization and delinquent accounting practices. Because of its prominence, BLM-GNF has gotten money and attention that much smaller charities haven't, even if they can prove they're on the ground doing good work. When BLM-GNF can't account for their $60 million, it not only makes them look bad, it makes things worse for other charities too. So what do you think? Leave your comments below. And if you like the show, please know we could not do it without direct support from viewers like you. Visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered and contribute a dollar or more per episode to help us keep the show going. So click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America. 
Uncovered.